Hello everybody and welcome back to another top 10 video about Dwarf Fortress. In this video I'm going to be covering 10 ways to improve the average mood of your dwarves. I'm going to be explaining a bunch of different rooms and setups and what they do and how they benefit your dwarves positively. And hopefully by the end of this video you will have a couple of tips or tricks or maybe things that you haven't been fully utilizing so that you can improve the average mood of your dwarves to look something like this. Let's dive right in. So the first thing on this list is something that a lot of people push back on. Keep your nobles happy. Seriously, keep your nobles happy, especially if you have any kind of religious figures or nobles such as a, like a baron, a count, or a monarch, or alternatively, things like your mayor. Now, the reason it's important to keep your nobles happy is they have a little mood job that a lot of people seem to ask for that they don't realize is in the game already. A therapy. They are literally your therapists for the entire fortress. They get this little job that says uh, they are conducting a meeting, and then you'll have upset dwarves that uh, will attend meetings with your mayor, barons, count, uh, religious leaders, and your king. And then what they do is they go and they cry on somebody in charge. And if the mayor and core count or everybody is fully satisfied with their rooms, the higher the better this is, then both the noble and the dwarf who's complaining to somebody in charge get a happy thought. The, the noble usually gets something like empathy, and the dwarf that's crying or shouting at somebody in charge will get satisfied, which is a very large mood buff and can seriously improve upset dwarves in, as well as keeping your nobles happy. Essentially, it creates a positive feedback loop where everybody improves. So if you have a bunch of nobles, try your best to satisfy them. If you have too many nobles, of course, you can always use the drawbridge technique to remove some of them, but at the very least, try your best to keep the default ones happy. Your mayor, your, your count or baron, and then your monarch if you get one. My second tip for this video is food and booze variety. Now, sometimes you'll see a dwarf that's upset that, and you look at their recent thoughts and they say, upset after consuming the same old booze or an uninteresting meal. This usually means that they're eating uncooked meals and probably they've only had one type of booze to drink for a long time. Now, the, a good way to do this is if you notice that you have a very large surplus of a very specific type of booze, either trade with some elves and, or humans and import a bunch of uh, vegetable variety, harvest a bunch of stuff from the surface using the uh, harvesting tool, or alternatively forbid a specific type of uh, food ingredient or brewing ingredient that you have too much of. So let's just say you have 2,000 some odd plump helmet wine. Maybe it's time to forbid those plump helmets from brewing for a little bit and get those dwarves to make something a little bit different, just so that the average dwarf is grabbing, let's say, raspberry wine or cherry wine instead of uh, plump helmet wine. Second thing is food variety, and this is exactly the same. So if you're making meals and you're noticing that you have a whole lot of one particular type of meal, maybe it's time to make soap out of all of that tallow and get them using something different because, you know, maybe a dwarf really wants to eat lungs from a llama specifically or alternatively wants to eat something a little bit different. They like food variety, so make sure that your kitchens are cooking vari a variety. Every now and again, check the stocks screen and see what you have a surplus of and maybe forbid that thing so that they cook a little bit less for a while. The next one is temples, specific deities and otherwise. So temples, uh, by default, you can make zones, and you can set them as temples. Now dwarves, at the very least, require a temple uh, dedicated to no particular deity. My favorite strat is to simply make a big, nice room that's well appointed, and then assign it with a zone to no particular deity, and then a bunch of small zones to every other deity that has worshippers in the fortress. These act as socializing zones, which are very important, which we'll discuss in a minute. And they also act as places for dwarves to meditate and pray. Now, if you get particular religions forming in your fortress, they will demand a temple dedicated to a specific religion of a specific god. When you get these demands, satisfy them as soon as possible, similar to uh, when you're building a guild hall, and then appoint a priest. This also acts similarly as the nobles that we spoke earlier about, where upset dwarves will go and cry on somebody in charge in the temple, and that's, this keeps your priest and those upset dwarves happier, as well as allowing your dwarves to perform specific rituals to that god, giving them an even better thought than they would otherwise in a generic temple. The next one is taverns and dining halls and the need for social time. I see a lot of people complaining that in Dwarf Fortress, uh, taverns and dining halls uh, kind of just do nothing. Well, or even worse, stop their dwarves from working. This actually is very much not the case. One of the most important jobs for dwarves in Dwarf Fortress, this is a job, is socializing. They spend time with other dwarves, they spend time with family, they meet friends, they meet their spouses, and they hang out. This is one of the po most positive and fastest ways to increase the general overall mood of your fortress. It's just simply building a tavern. Be a little bit careful with tavern keepers, as while they do provide even more emotional support, they can also make the dwarves a little bit too emotionally happy, which can cause fights. So be a little bit careful with the amount of alcohol being served if you do have tavern keepers. 
Of course, performers and other dwarves uh, will come into the fortress and uh, entertain your visitors uh, and your dwarves, which is a really good thing to have. But be a little bit wary about outsiders coming into your tavern as they may bring wearisms. So it might also be a good idea to simply set them to not public and just let your dwarves do the entertaining themselves. They're quite good at it. The next thing I want to note is you may notice in this in the footage in the background I have some dining halls scattered throughout this. Now, dining halls, some I've had some people ask if they do anything. Well, they just simply give a different thought. So if a dwarf goes into a tavern, grabs some food, runs to the near dining hall, which is in the middle of the tavern, a big table, and they sit down and they eat, they get a separate happy thought for sitting in a dining hall. Uh, it, an example of this would be uh, is content or satisfied after uh, eating a, me a fine meal and then also uh, is satisfied after spending time in a... Uh, amazing dining hall. So essentially, you want your dwarves to uh, go into the tavern, go to the dining hall, eat their food, get an extra happy thought, and then go back and socialize. Even better, stack those moods. The next one sounds really simple, but a lot of people, I think, kind of mess up with this. Bedrooms. Make them as nice as possible. The nicer the bedroom, the happier the dwarf is every single time they sleep. Yeah, they don't sleep very often, but sleeping in a very nice bedroom gives them a much better thought than sleeping in a cruddy bedroom. I see so many people trying to save space with uh, making tiny, tiny, tiny little bedrooms with no furniture, furn furniture in them. Make your bedrooms as big as you want. Like, you have 200-something Z-levels of space to build in in Dwarf Fortress. Make your bedrooms massive and gaudy. The dwarves love them. Or construct them entirely out of materials because that just inflates the value. Number six on my list is a little bit, you know, controversial, potentially. Children. Now, I always see all over the internet people screaming about how children are constantly tantruming and becoming little, uh, you know, Jack the Rippers, for lack of a better term. In reality, children have a very simple little behavior in this game. They grab an item, they haul an item, assuming you have chores enabled, and then they play, make-believe, for a little bit before they then grab another job and move to their next location. So you want to make sure that where, whatever your children are doing, they're not going to places that are uh, catastrophically mentally destructive. So ideally, you want them to be staying out of battlefields, you want them to be staying out of your corpse piles, and you don't really want them hauling refuse. So if you go into the chores screen, you can remove these jobs, and this will permit them to just simply play, haul items as needed, and get their happy thoughts without also mentally destroying them because they just hauled an 18th dead puppy. Also worth noting, if you have particularly upset dwarves, over here on the left side of the chores screen, you can specifically remove certain dwarves from chores. So if you have, let's just say, a dozen children, and ten of them are pretty okay doing the chores, and two of them are really upset, maybe it's time to remove those two, or two from chores and allow them to go get some respite. It's also worth noting, making a bunch of toys is good for them as well. Put a stockpile of toys in the tavern and, uh, the kids will be quite happy. The next thing I want to talk about is guilds. I do have videos on how to do many of these subjects in the description, so I will be linking all of the relative tutor relevant tutorials down in the description of this video. So if you're like, man, I want to see a more detailed video on that, check out the description of this video. But uh, next thing I'm going to be talking about is guilds. Now, guilds are my personal favorite place to put stockpiles of toys, just for reference. And guilds are super helpful because... In Dwarf Fortress, one of the biggest traps that people fall into is overproducing certain items. This goes for craft stores, uh, and this goes for all sorts of other jobs that dwarves need to learn. Now, if you want to get the happy thoughts out of producing items while also getting social time without actually uh, overproducing in your fortress, a really, really good tip here is to just build a lot of guild halls, regardless of whether or not they demand them, and then satisfy the 2,000 value. It's quite easy to do. Once you build out these guild halls, any dwarf that is skilled in that skill can organize... Uh, lessons, essentially, and they will actually go and teach classes in the guild halls. If they're public, sometimes you'll even get adventurers from outside of your fortress coming to teach classes. And this uh, allows dwarves of a certain skill type to congregate and learn this skill without actually having to practice it, meaning instead of you needing to massively overproduce certain items or alternatively build huge farm fields or massive crafting setups or huge clothing setups, uh, sim dwarves will simply train and get the same thought of producing the item without actually producing the item. One of the best ways to train a particular dwarf as well as improve their overall mood. The next one is small, but also worth noting. If you place a bunch of statues in an area and then you put a meeting zone on top of it, dwarves who stand in that meeting zone will admire the statues. This also goes for most other types of furniture as well as pedestals with art on them. If those items are in a zone, then dwarves can get the thought of uh, feels in awe after seeing a tastefully arranged insert item here. This also is a very happy thought that I don't see a lot of people utilizing. And it's quite easy to implement. Just place a bunch of statues down, throw a couple pedestals, put a couple gems on them, and then place a meeting zone on top of it. Dwarves will hang out there, they'll sometimes talk, and they will also admire art. Now the next one I want to talk about is libraries. Now libraries are great, but they're also kind of specific. They specifically uh, satisfy the need for learning as well as uh, wandering and 
uh, the need to like uh, like uh, learn and think about things. Uh, there are certain types of dwarves that are almost impossible to please unless you make them into a scholar. Scholars go and ponder different things and will either just stack positive moods repeatedly on top of each other or uh, will slowly fall into stress having to ponder things all the time and focus on uh, that kind of academics. But if you find a dwarf that just can't be helped in almost any way, it might be time to just assign them as a scholar. Maybe they just want to go think and learn and study. Maybe they're a professional student and they'll become very good at it and then write you some books later down the line. If you want a tutorial for books, links in the description. And the last one on this list is Miss Generators. Now, if all else fails and you are incapable of keeping your fortress happy, one of the best ways to do this is simply build some Mist Generators. Now, I know that dwarves don't like being rained on, however, they love the mist of being near a waterfall. They absolutely love it. It's kind of like, you know, if you go st spend some time in the desert, there's just nothing better than just a little spritz bottle with some water on it. It's like, ah, keep that skin moist. And that's essentially all you're doing here. You are uh, breaking all of that dirt off of them without actually uh, giving them a bath. And uh, that's another way is just build wells. I will sneak that in as a bonus. Build wells and make soap, and then they get soapy baths, and they get very happy. But seriously, mist generators are a very, very, very good way of just, like, forcing your entire fortress into happiness in a very short period of time. Also, there's a tutorial for soap uh, in the description of this video if you want more information on the soap and wells, as well as how to make mist generators. And that brings us to the end of this top 10 list video. I've had a lot of people ask me to make videos about some ways to make your dwarves happier, so here it is. I don't know if this is helpful. If it was helpful to you, let me know down in the comments section. If you want to support this channel directly and allow me to do more contests and other things, you can do that by picking up a piece of merch or becoming a patron. And if you're looking for the VOD archives or the video on demands uh, stream archives from my Twitch channel, you can find that at the Blind Extras channel. Link to that in the description as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.